Today we're going to talk about how you can still utilize photos and photography in your church or your ministry. Are you ready? Because it's time. You're listening to the Church Digital Sidekick Podcast, part of the TCD Podcast Network. Hey heroes, my name is Tom Pound and this is the Church Digital Sidekick Podcast. This is a podcast where I bring on ministry leaders and we talk about how you can do ministry more effectively in this very digital and online world. And today I'm bringing back my friend Ben Stapley onto the podcast Ben and I've been on the po- well. Ben's been on the podcast a number of times, and he's always got great insights, whether it's digital stuff or leadership stuff. And today we're going to talk about photography. I know he's a big into video, but he's also big into photography. And so today we're going to talk about how you cannot forget about photography. Video is important; it's great. We need it, but we also need photos too. And why do we need them? And how can we utilize them? That's what we're talking about today. But before we get into that, I do want to highlight the church.digital. At the church.digital, we have tons of podcasts, we have tons of blogs, we have tons of resources, we have tons of coaching, and it's all designed to help you in your online ministry, whether it's online only, digital, where it's a combination of online and digital, or whether it's metaverse ministry. We've got lots of stuff for you, and we would love for you to check out the church.digital. It's really going to help you out and really encourage you and give you insights that will help you move your ministry to that next level. So check out the church.digital today. All right, without any further ado, let's get into the interview with Ben Stapley talking about photography. All right, with me right now is my friend Ben Stapley. Ben, how are you? I'm doing great, Tom. Thank you so much for having me on. We haven't talked in a while, but it always feels like we start from the, I don't know, we start, start where we picked up last. Yeah. So it's great to talk with you again. Yeah, I mean, it is. Uh, whenever we get together, we always have great conversations. And I am I am tracking you on social media. I mean, you, you are very active on Twitter. So I love just seeing what you're up to and just seeing all the stuff you're sharing. So uh, it's great to catch up with you today. Yes, looking forward to this conversation. Okay, so um, before we get into the actual conversation, why don't you update people on who you are and what you've been doing? Uh, again, I, I know who you are. You've been on the podcast a number of times, so just give everyone a quick refresher. Yeah, I've been in ministry for about 20 years now, and I've been moved around to a couple of churches, worked at a number of mega churches on executive teams. Currently, I'm serving as an executive pastor at the Life Christian Church in West Orange, New Jersey. In addition to that, I got a chance to help church leaders like yourself in your community by sharing on podcasts, speaking at conferences, and coaching individuals and teams. So that's a quick overview of myself and a quick plug. If you find out, want to find out more, go to benstapley.com. Uh, but that's a quick overview of who I am and the journey God's took me on so far. Yeah, you're Canadian too. You'll hear some of the accent. I don't know if some of it has eked out already. I'm, I'm As a good Canadian, I will apologize for that and apologize to our listeners. Uh, I, I, I played hockey a little bit in high school and um, we had a Canadian coach and he would always say A. You know, you know he'd say A a lot. Yes, we are known for doing that. Yes, <laughs> that's great. All right. Well, we're not going to talk about Canadians um, today. We're going to talk about photography. Uh, and so some of the stuff that we're obviously seeing, you and I are very active on social media and, and whatnot, is that, you know, video is dominating, you know, whereas Instagram used to be the power player for photography. Now they're pushing video more and more and all platforms are pushing video. But there is really something still to be said for photography. So I want to get into just the importance of photography and having good photos for your church Mm -hmm. in this very video driven world that we're living in. So why don't you start us off then talk about uh, the the power of photography uh, today. Yeah, and you I love the way you're framing this conversation, not only by itself, but in contrast to other mediums like video in particular, because at the end of the day, each each artistic discipline has pros and cons to it. None of them is perfect. None of them is the, is the best form of communication. Sometimes the written word, sometimes the graphic, sometimes the video, sometimes the photo is the best. But the key is understanding the pros and cons of each artistic discipline and communication form, and then when to apply it. Because if not, you're right. You know, everyone else is doing video. I guess I need to do video and spend a lot of money doing video. Well, that's not always, sometimes it's the case not always a case sometimes it's photo so that's that's my first caveat even before we jump into the conversation so the biggest picture is understanding how they work and then when to use them the second thing is i'm a fanboy of video i i started my career as a video producer in television so we're going to do a comparison here between photos and video but 
at the end of the day, you're right. Video does have a lot of power, um, big proponent of it, but I know that's not the conversation here. So I just want to put that out there. Still, still team video as well, Tom. Don't, don't try to get that twisted. Thanks. I appreciate that. I, I didn't know you were a video producer back in the day. Yes, I, in, in television and news. And so I may turn this conversation around and start interviewing you at some point because it's oh, no. in my blood. I can't, I can't get away from it. Oh, no, I don't, I don't, this is my podcast. I, you, I interview you. No. <laughs> so, okay. Um, all right. So let's talk about that. Let's talk about photography. What, how would you encourage us? Yeah. So I know you were in some of the lead up to this conversation. One of the things you wanted to push into was, hey, what, what does it look like in contrast to photo versus video? And for me, there's kind of five reasons why I'd say photo is at times better than video. And I'll, I'll run through it really quickly. If you want to pause me at any point, go for it. Or you can just respond at the end of the, the laundry list to the five reasons why photo is at times better than video. But the first one is it's, it's lower effort. So when it comes to video, you need to be good at the AV and L, the audio, make sure it sounds good. Uh, yeah. The video, the visual aspect of it, make sure it's framed right. And then the lighting that's needed to get a decent video. Uh, so you need all those. When it comes to photo, you just need, really, you just need the V. You just need the visual aspect of it. And there's some um, lighting that's needed as well. But at the end of the day, the bar for entry is lower, which means you can have more people participating in that artistic discipline. Mm -hmm. That's why it has a, that's why it's better than video at times. Yeah. Um, lower effort. Next thing, lower cost. When, we, you know, if you need the A, V, and L, each of those components has a cost contributed towards it. Probably the biggest cost would be the visual, the video side of it, the, the body, the lens, but video needs lighting, video needs audio. Photography doesn't need that. So again, a lower bar for entry in terms of the experience and then the cost. Uh, and then higher. So that, those are some lower things, some higher. You have a, you have a higher application mes method with photo. And what I mean by that is when you show videos, what do you need to show videos? You need two key things. You need a screen and you need a, generally speaking, you need a speaker system, unless it's a silent film, which I don't know about you. I don't know the last time I've watched a silent film. Um, you're going to need a screen and a speaker system. What do you need for photos? Well, you need some type of screen, but you don't need the speaker system. You don't need any audio source on that. And sometimes you don't even need the screen. Oftentimes we think of photos that the application is, is still, it's a, it's a digital application because we're taking our photos from a digital source. But a lot of photos still in this day and age have a physical application. You're at church and you're, you're printing off a, a lawn banner or you're, you're hanging artwork in your lobby. There's still a lot of physical applications. So the application method is much higher because it can go around uh, different places. Uh, and then also higher is the consumption rate. Uh, I don't know about you, but uh, if you know, most of us at this time, uh, even though we might not like to admit it, we'll take our phones with us when we go to the bathroom. And, uh, and sometimes we will scroll on our phones. When we're doing that, we will probably look at things, but we probably won't listen to things. I mean, maybe, you know, you've probably been in the bathroom at times and you hear somebody on the stall beside you watching a video. That's weird. And I just might, you know, I'm going to step in my soapbox and say, we all need to stop doing that at some point. <laughs> but a lot of us are still scrolling on our phones and looking at photos, right? Or maybe we're in a meeting and the, <laughs> and the boss is talking and like we're a little distracted and we got the phone underneath the desk and we're, we're kind of doing that scroll thing and nobody sees it because we're, we're muted. We can, again, do that with photos. Videos doesn't give us a chance, unless it's subtitles, it doesn't give us a chance to do that. So it's got a higher um, application method and then it's got a higher consumption rate, photos over videos for the average audience. And then the last reason that I would say photo is unique to video and at times better than videos is because it freezes you in a moment. We're having a conversation right now. It's got to start a middle and an end. When you watch a video, it's got to start a middle and an end. It's got a narrative arc towards it, which is great. It takes you on a journey. It takes you from point A to point B. Photos arrest you in a moment. They freeze you there. I kind of use the analogy of that, the frozen bug in the amber from Jurassic Park, right? That's what, that's what photo does. It freezes it for days, years, decades. It freezes that moment in time. And the reason that's important for us and our busy go, go, go culture is it gives us the needed time to pause and look at something and reflect on it. And even in this conversation where I'm speaking a mile a minute, it's hard for me to do that. Yeah. 
photos force us as a culture to stop, look at something and reckon with it before moving on. So those are the unique advantages of photo over video. Well, you know, it's kind of interesting. Uh, a few things I want to uh, hit on is one is what you just said too, is like, you know, sometimes I go on walks or I'll go on a run and I'll see the sun in a certain way or I'll see the clouds. And I don't, the one thing I don't think about doing is taking a video of it. I actually think about taking a picture of it because it is, it's beautiful. I want people to see the beauty of what I'm doing or what I'm experiencing and share that. So I, I like what you said about that, um, about that experience. But then also back to one of your first points is that you said that um, there is, it's a lower effort to do photo, photos rather than um, the uh, video. And what I hear people saying, especially in the church world, is I'm not gifted in taking photo photos. I can't do that. How would you counter that if someone says to you, hey, listen, I'm, thanks. I appreciate you wanting me to be on the photography team, but I'm not a photographer. I can't do that. Well, I would say if you can't do that, you're definitely not going to join our video team. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. um, but, uh, you know. And it's interesting you're bringing that up. I, man, I don't want to go too much on a side tangent here, but I, the tension I find with most people is not telling them, you, you can do this, you're going to be good enough, we're going to provide the training. Um, I, I find most churches can do that. The struggle I find with a lot of people is, hey, I, I got an iPhone, and I, I, I do this all day long, um, and uh, so I, I'm on your photo team, right? Oh, <laughs> and, uh, yeah, and, and, and so I I found um, most people that their estimation of their skill set is actually higher than what it is and what is needed for the team, and that they're surprised that the needed coaching and training will provide to trying to get them up to speed. And then when we do, we show them, hey, this is your portfolio before, and look at it now. They're like, oh my goodness, I, I had no idea there's something called rule thirds or leading lines or what a framing device is, and and then they get excited about it. Yeah. But I've I found the the opposite tension of what you're talking about is I think most younger people joining teams have a higher estimation of their skill set, which is good. They think they're good. They're going to be able to crush it. That's fine. You just need to provide the coaching as you go. Well, I, that's awesome. I, I'm glad you gave that pushback on the other side of that because I haven't experienced that. I've only, I'm like begging people, come on, dude, I've seen your social media. You're, you're good. But I like the, the important thing that you said is the coaching that you're going to provide, you are going to, they're going to be a part of this team. And then you provide them the coaching and the equipping to how to make their photos even better than what they actually think they are. So I, I think that's really important. Um, but, but, but just since we're, we're parked here for the churches who are like yourself saying, I struggle getting people on board and serving on my team. There's some like really low hanging fruit that I do with all my, for, for production teams. First of all, the t-shirts that they wear, you know, when they're serving on the team and, you know, it says, you know, media team on the back. I always get on the print on the back. Um, if you want to join, you know, email photo at X, Y, and Z church. Yeah. And it just, it's, first of all, it's free advertisement. Yeah. Um, and then the other thing too, is I've seen a lot of churches do, do this where they'll, they'll get people to, to take photos and they'll dump them and they'll all archive them and they never see the light of day. So mm -hmm. if you're able to to show to your photographers what you took showed up in here, here, and here. We saw it on social, it landed on our website, and then it was shown in our services on our LED wall or projection screens. Oh, good. My artwork found the light of day. And yeah. because if you don't, then it's like, why, why am I taking, I, I, have, I took a thousand photos and they went nowhere. And that's really frustrating to artists. Um, if they see where their art lands, they're going to be much more inspired to keep participating. Yeah, that's actually a really good point. You really highlight to them, hey, this is how we, thanks for taking these photos. Here's how we use it. So I think that's really cool. Okay, so you just talked about the power of uh, photos and the reach that it has and whatnot. Well, let's talk about the importance of it. You know, why is it still important? I mean, because again, if, if video is so important and gets better reach, supposedly, why is it so important for us to still continue to do pho photography? Mm, great, great, great question. The, the first one I would say it's, um, it's a lot more memorable photos are than video because again, it freezes you in a moment and it arrests you in the time and you're with video. Oh gosh, if you're, you're shooting at 24 frames a second 
and it's a, a 60 second video. I can't do math really quick. But that's a lot of frames. That's a lot of images yeah. that you've shown to people and they're not going to remember them all. You show them one and it's going to be a lot more memorable. I always ask people um, who've checked out our website, hey, do you, um, what do you remember what was written on there? And they might, they might be able to pull out your vision statement or your service times. Mm -hmm. um, they're not going to remember any of what you've written in terms of your theological statements. Uh, but they will say, hey, I, um, I did see that photo on the front um, of the kid um, having a good time in the children's ministry space. And I think I'm going to bring my kids there. It seems like it's a safe place that they're going to enjoy. They, they're going to remember the visuals. They're going to remember the photos. So that's the first thing I'd say in terms of why churches need to keep on pushing into photography. They're a lot more memorable, a lot more memorable than videos and a lot more, a lot more memorable than the words that you say or the words that you write. Uh, I always say, you know, whenever I ask people, hey, you know, I get a chance to preach once in a while. And I always say, hey, well, you know, what did you remember or what impacted you? And they do not remember my fun alliteration or my six point outline. They never remember that stuff. Uh, they always remember the visual support that I give with it. And, and then that unlocks the story or the scripture. So it's highly memorable. That's the, one of the reasons I, I push for it. Uh, the other one is it shows what is unseen. So what I mean by that is uh, photos have a unique way because the way we're able to manip manipulate them to show people what is unseen. So as an example towards that, when you have a, a fast shutter speed, you're able to capture a hummingbird in flight. And so normally we just see a blur of activity, but oh my goodness, it actually has wings and those wings are keeping it uh, aloft and, and in flight. Our eyes can't perceive that. Cameras can and photos can show us things that we can't see. When you take a, a, a long... Uh, time lapse uh, of of a, of a car driving at night. And then you see the the blur of the headlines behind it. Photos show us things that are unseen, that our eyes wouldn't normally see. And so that's a unique advantage towards it as well. And and then you know two other ones I'll end with um, is it helps bring things into focus. And we talked a little bit about this. How first of all they pause time, so they allow us to be contemplative, which is great as a culture. And they also allow us to focus on something. Uh, generally speaking, the human eye can see from kind of three or four feet beyond itself in terms of focus and then in, in infinity. So generally speaking, when we see things, when we look around the world, everything is in focus. It's all in focus in terms of us. When it comes to photography, because we're able to control that, that depth of field, the amount of things that are in focus, it, it um, allows us to focus in on the topic. Even with my camera right here, you've probably noticed that there's a shallow depth of focus that I'm in focus my background is it because I want I want the people watching this video to pay attention to looking at me instead of the silly background behind me yeah photos allow you to do that again in a, in a super busy world where people are cluttered and unfocused photography allows you to say hey, look at this pay attention to this one thing right now and then the last reason why they're super important is um, they allow us to keep memories alive so why do people why do couples print off and purchase photo albums of their kids? Uh, you know, why do when individuals print, frame, and hang photos of loved ones around their house? Because they want to keep those memories alive. What is what is social media throw you? You know, yearly reminder, reminders. This is what you posted last year. This is what you posted five years ago. Because there's a there's a huge. They know there's a huge power in that. You want to see that content. You want to be reminded because you forgot of what you posted and what more importantly what happened a year ago what happened five years ago and if they show that to you it's going to unlock that memory and it's going to have a, a meaningful emotional impact to you that's why they keep feeding you that content because they know that's the way we're, we're wired we forget things but we want to remember things right. photos allow us to tap into that desire to remember what's been forgotten yeah I, i'm telling you the, the I, I agree completely, especially with that last thing is like, I, I'm so grateful that my mom took all the photos that she did. Of course, when I was younger, we didn't want to be photographed. Oh, mom, no, no, no. Um, and Ben, I see the photos of you and your family that you take. I mean, I just, I'm so grateful that my mom took those photos so that I can remember because we spent time overseas in Germany back in the <laughs> early 80s. And I don't remember everything, you know, I'm 47 now. I don't remember everything, but because my mom took those photos and then put them in a photo album, I was able to remember that moment and it re recurred. Now, listen, if she took video and now video wasn't really big back then, 
But like if she took a video, I don't think I would watch, sit and watch the two hour video of that experience. But me standing next to the shepherd, the German shepherd while he was doing his work was like, I'm like, I remember that. I mean, and so it's just, you're so right though. It's so important to, to create those memories and then to share them on whatever platform you have. So yeah, the, and, and when you were, when you see that one photo of the German shepherd, you then remember that whole two hour experience. So you don't have to watch that two hour video to have that memory unlocked. You yeah. just have to have that one photo and it brings you back to the whole experience. Yeah. yeah. So true. All right. So let's get into the practical stuff here. Um, th this is so important about the power and the importance of photography, but how can churches utilize photography still today? Yeah. You say still today. It's the, it is not a dying art form, you know, <laughs> how do churches utilize calligraphy, even in this modern age? Uh, I, my mother-in-law is a calligrapher. So I say that very tongue in cheek. Um, so yes, we, we can still use photography today, uh, even though video is, is on the rise. So th there's the typical uh, formats that a lot of people are thinking of and already applying, which is great. Your website, your social media platforms are probably the two biggest typical ways in churches utilize that. If you're not, make sure to do that. If I go to your website and the majority of your contents are words and not images, you've missed the boat. Uh, yeah. The majority of the vast majority, I usually hear about 85% of us are visual learners. So meet people where they're at, yeah. uh, not with graphics um, and not with text, but with images on can your I, social and you? your website. Yeah. yeah. Can I stop you there real quick? Because I think that's really important because I look at my website, our website at our church. It, there's a lot of graphics, not a lot mm -hmm. of photos. And I always like to say real uh, people like to see real people doing real things. And so you can have a great graphic. But if they're not, they want to, people want to see people actually doing what you're talking about. Yes. Now, well, let's call it out. There's, a, there's an inherent tension with that because graphics are evergreen. Their graphic is not going to age in gray, gray hair and then look odd because it was taken 20 years ago. I, I guess they say evergreen. Stylistically, it will go out of date at some point. But the graphic's never going to go to another church down the road and say bad things about your church. The graphic's not going to do that. Some people in your churches may do that. And, and not may, will. That's just the nature. Um, people are on a spiritual journey. Sometimes it's up, sometimes it's down. And so with the photos, there's a tension of that. That is this person going to be around here five years later? No, you know, no. Are we going to need to update it? Yes. Should we still push into it? Yes, because we probably shouldn't have a photo on our website longer than five years. So, so th there's a tension with some of that. So we talked we talked about some of the typical applications. Let me jump into the atypical in terms of hey, I never I never thought about that. Yeah. It's probably four that come to the top of my my mind. The first one being um, campus artwork. One of my pet peeves in churches is what I call the, the holiday in artwork. So when you go into a lobby space and you have like these generic pastoral photos of it's a landscape and there's a, there's a brook and there's a hill in the background and it, it says nothing and it offends nobody. And so we're, we're going to play it safe. We're going to put that up there. Um, you're, you're not utilizing your campus wall space to a dynamic and engaging way. And there's a lot of ways in which you can do it. You could hire local artists to create original content for a lot of different ways. One of those ways is photography. So like, why don't you take the photos of what's happening at your church and to put it on your walls? Again, it's going to have a shelf life on it. You're not going to want those photos up there, especially if they're kids. You see this, you know, most of the kids, you take a photo of a kid at eight year old and then four years later, they're 12. And it's like, oh my goodness, you're a completely different human. And that photo of you in the wall, we got to take down because it looks completely embarrassed. Yes. There is a price of admission to doing that. And you're going to need to cycle through those photos left, that are on your walls probably about every three to five years. But it's a lot more engaging than seeing vanilla artwork on the wall that nobody pays attention to. So on your campuses, utilize it as much as you can. Um, the next thing I would say is, uh, and this is maybe a little outside of the control of people who are listening, unless they're the teaching pastors, the lead pastors, but message support. So when I say that, a lot of, a lot of, People preparing their messages think through, they think through it um, bullet points, right? Here's my bullet points, my message. They don't think visually, what's the support I need? Whenever someone says something that has a visual element to it, as an audience member, I want to see that. So if you're talking about your father and what a mentor they've been to you the, your whole life on, on a Father's Day message, I better see a photo of you and him hugging or arm in arm 
um, or you on his lap when you were a kid behind you because you're talking about it. We all want to see it when you're, you know, you're talking about the fishing trip you went on and the big fishing. Don't just say it, show it. So message support would be the second thing. And again, that's a little tricky because a lot of teaching pastors were taught how to construct messages with text and not with images. Mm -hmm. But there's a chance for you to coach them there. Um, and then the, the other way in relationship to that as well in terms of the service experience is with your, your generosity moment, um, your offering time, when you call the congregation towards exercising financial stewardship and financial generosity. When you talk about it, don't just say it, show it as well. So when you say, hey, thank you for your generosity, it goes towards us creating a great kids experience. By the way, we had 200 kids at our VBS last week. It was phenomenal. There better be a slideshow that's going on behind you showing it and not just saying it. And then the, the last application as well, which is a little unique because I think, I think we forget about it, especially if we grew up in a digital age, but photos can be printed and they can be sent to people. Believe it or not, Tom, I might be blowing your mind right now. I know that, but stay with me here for a moment. You can print off photos. And the reason I say that is child, two key moments, two key moments, low, low hanging fruit for churches here is your child dedications and your baptisms, kind of milestone moments for people in their faith journey, for their children or for themselves. Get a photographer to take that, print that, put it in the mail, they will frame that and they will be thankful. And for a couple of reasons, first of all, if you get a professional doing it, it's better than grandma on the back row taking it with her flip phone, right? It's going to be a higher quality. And the second thing is they usually don't think about it themselves. They're kind of so caught up in the moment. They're not, they're just experiencing it. They're not capturing it. You can capture it for them in a high quality, send it to them as a gift later on that week. And oh my goodness, that, 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 that's, that small step right there will probably be the most meaning thing, meaningful thing you do for them as a church that year. Uh, print it, send those key moments to people when possible. That is awesome. Actually, I am so encouraged by that. Every time I talk to you, I always get some nugget or nuggets that really encourage me. Uh, and that is the thing I'm going to take away from this the most is take those pictures because we do baptisms all the time. We do child dedications a few times a year. Take those pictures, send them to the families. Oh my gosh, that, that's such a great thing that someone can do. And you're right. They're going to take that picture. They're going to post it up there uh, on their, uh, they're going to frame it. They're going to even put it up on their um, refrigerator. They're going to remember that moment. And even if you said, uh, think about it, like keep track of it and say a year from now, send them that same picture and say, hey, happy one year anniversary to your baptism or your child dedication you're highlighting these key moments and you're helping people reflect and remember Christ uh, in their lives. So that, I think that's awesome. That's such a great practical step they can do. So. Yeah. That, uh, and, and anything, you know, I like these conversations because I share with you and, but you also share with me. So if there's anything I missed, you tell me, because I want to learn from this conversation as well, Tom. No, see, you can't flip this on me. I, you're, the reason why I, <sighs> I have tried. this one here, the reason why you have the, I have you on here is because you're the expert here and I want to, I want to get to know knowledge here. I, I seriously, I, I learn a lot uh, from you and it's just having great conversations uh, with you. Uh, this has been fantastic, Ben. I, I so appreciate this. Where, where can people connect with you? Um, again, give your website, give your social platform so that they can ask you questions if they have follow up. Yeah, if you want, jump on benstapley.com slash photo would probably be the best place for people to go in terms of continuing learning on this topic. And then if you want to creep on me in terms of social media and see how I do photography, um, just Ben Stapley. I think I'm on all the platforms with that handle. Nice. And again, just to go very bare bones basic, you don't have to have a specific phone, right? You just need to have a phone and they can be a part participant uh, and help, right? Ye yes. So the bar of entry is really low. That being said, I would encourage churches to buy a low end mirrorless camera so that they can let people grow and develop on that. So they don't need to bring one to the table, but if the church has one that they could lend them, then the, the quality is going to be much higher. Um, so I would, I would make that rudimentary per uh, purchase with a, with a, a couple prime lenses. You're maybe looking at a thousand dollars and the, the, you're going to see your photo quality jump dramatically with that type of investment as a church. Yeah, I, I agree. I, again, we encourage people to use their phones, um, but we also have a handful, well, a handful, we have like two other uh, 
actual cameras with real lenses that really help us on that too. So, well, Ben, as always, it's great. I appreciate you uh, taking time to talk to me today. Excellent. Thank you so much, Tom, for having me again. All right. So what did you think? What stood out to you about that? How were you encouraged? How were you challenged? Again, I always say this with some people, especially with Ben, every time he's on, I learn something new and I'm challenged in a different way. And I was challenged today as well. So I hope you were, uh, I would love to hear where you were challenged, where you were encouraged, maybe what other questions you have. So definitely put it in the comment section below, or you can hit me up on Twitter at TA Pounder. You can also hit up Ben. I've got all his information in the show notes. Hit us both up on Twitter. He's active on it. We would both love to continue this conversation and talk more about photography and how you can utilize it for your church or your ministry. All right, heroes. Well, thanks so much for being with me today. As always, if you enjoyed the podcast, go and subscribe to it. It's on Apple Podcasts. It's on Spotify. We would love for you to subscribe to it there. You can also find it at thechurch.digital. There I've got a lot of other content as well and other content from other uh, writers and podcasters. Uh, Jeff Reed runs the site. It's a great site uh, for you to check out, again, for your online ministry needs. All right, here's why. I hope you have a great rest of your day. Until next time, have a great one.